in investing your time in studying the Word of God is one of the best investments you can make, right? Because it's limitless. Really, like, I remember giving a, my Bible to my aunt when I first got saved because she was, like, strong Catholic and didn't really believe in reading her Bible. And I gave it to her, and she said, well, what do you want me to do with it after I read it? <laughs> I said, well, you're going to read it again. And she said, why? I said, because you're going to get something new out of it the second time when you read it. And then read it again and read it again after that, right? Am I telling you the truth here? Isn't it so rich that no matter how long you've been a Christian and how many times you read it, and there's so many new versions of the Bible out now that help you understand it in a different light. And that's what happened to me this week. I was studying for the Tuesday night class that I teach, and uh, it's, you know, about the anointing with David. He had three different anointings, if you uh, remember his life. Samuel, the first time when Saul was rejected, God sent Samuel and, and anointed him with oil. And then David became the king of half the nation many years later. So that was the second anointing. And then the third time uh, when he was 37 years old, so probably about 20 years after that original anointing, he became king over the whole nation. And as I was studying that anointing, this verse was brought to my attention. And uh, we read it. It says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. So what's a yoke? You remember when Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, right? What, what is that? Like not everybody even fully remembers what that's about. It's a farming term, right? And it was two cattle. When they put the ox or the cattle next to each other, they would yoke them together with a clamp around their neck. It was like being a prisoner. And they would put a younger one with an older one because they wanted the older one to train the younger one how it would work, right? And look, you know, like we're heavy laden and we're burdened. We have this heavy yoke. And Jesus said, no, yoke yourself up to me because my burden is what? Light. And that's great, isn't it? So that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to get that old thing broken off us and come in under his yoke. And when we're with him, things go easy. But this is talking about the enemy's yoke. And it says that the yoke of oppression of the enemy will be destroyed because of the anointing. So God's power comes inside of us. And, and what I like about this other version of the Bible that I had never seen before, it says the yoke will be taken off because your neck will be too large. <laughs> so that's a very different picture than just God coming in and breaking it off for you. He just strengthens you so much that your muscles grow so big that the yoke just breaks off because you're too big underneath it. That's a better picture, isn't it? And that's what I want. And that's, that's what I believe happens to us as Christians. The anointing comes on us. It says that actually about Samson in the Bible, that when the anointing came on him, he killed 30 men. Right? It, it would just come on people in bursts in the Old Testament. Happened to David, too. When he got anointed, it says the Spirit of God filled him from that day forward. And just that was in 1 Samuel 16. In the next chapter, he killed Goliath. Right? So, boy, there's something about the anointing of God. How many want more of that? Every hand should be going up. We all need more power, right? But I just haven't gotten that word picture out of my mind that it's not just God coming in and doing it for me. He strengthens me. And I become like the Incredible Hulk in a Holy Ghost way. And those old yokes, those old bondages, those shackles that were on me just have to break off because I got too big. <laughs> I think you should flex your muscles a little. You'll feel better. All right, so let's just look at a couple of examples of that. And, and this is my, um, my way of doing what Tricia said. She said to rewrite your declarations. That was so powerful. And... You'd think that we would know what each other is preaching. <laughs> We've been together 33, four, 34, is it? Going to be 34. I know you're clapping for me <laughs> because I survived. I'm really fast, that's why. <laughs> so rewriting your decree is so powerful. There's something about writing it down and, and just speaking it out loud. And that's what happened to me again this week was like, the Lord said, you need to write it down, and, and we're going to focus on that part of the formula. Somebody used that word this morning, that part of the process when God comes in and strengthens us and gives us the ability for that old yoke to break off. But we're not supposed to just stay out on our own after the old yoke breaks off. We then have to yoke ourselves in with Jesus, right? And that old yoke just could be habits in our lives. 
It could be really destructive behavior that we're involved in that every other area of our life could be going well, but this one thing could be hurting us really badly. And it's hard to talk about because, you know, as a Christian, we're supposed to be everything always going so good all the time. But part of deliverance is for Christians too. Did you know that? You know deliverance happens for Christians as well? A few people laughing here. Yeah, right. I mean, because some people walk in a little naively thinking, oh, no, once I become a Christian, all that stuff gets cleaned up. Well, a lot of stuff gets cleaned up, so that's good. But then there's those little foxes that try to hang in there and spoil the vine. And the Lord's saying, no, you know what? I'm going to anoint your life, and you're going to grow so strong, that thing's not going to be able to hold on to you anymore. You're going to be like a grease pig at the county fair. <laughs> the devil's going to try to grab you, and you're going to be so slippery, he ain't going to be able to catch you. <laughs> so I think, you know, again, I know this could get a little tedious, but I gave it in your handout, so you don't have to try to read it off the screen. But just pull the handout out of your bulletin that you were given on the way in. And I, and I just think there's something good about releasing it out into the atmosphere. So we're going to say it out loud together, okay? This is falling under that same topic of what Tricia said, that we're kind of rewriting our declarations and rewriting our decrees, because what we were is not what we are. Believe that? I am going someplace. I am on my way to a better destination. So let's read it. It says, the victorious journey of the believer. Ready? Number one. I was under the death sentence yoke of sin's bondage. So a yoke is something that clamps you down when you're attached to an evil source that's next to you. It's something that empowers you when you're yoked up to Jesus. But before I knew Jesus, I had a death sentence yoke on my life. How about you? It was really obvious in my life. Some people, it's not so obvious. But for me, it was. I was under the death sentence yoke of sin's bondage before I knew Jesus. I'll, let's read two. I recognized I was doomed to eternal damnation and repented of my sin. How about you? You really have a hard time repenting if you don't recognize the problem that you're in. And you have to recognize that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And how many of you, before you became a Christian, you said, yeah, but I'm a good person? <laughs> that wasn't good enough, was it? Because we still had original sin in our lives, and, and us on our own without the Lord isn't getting us in. We can't find favor with God. You can only find favor with God coming in behind the cross coming in behind the substitutionary work of Jesus. And that's number three. Let's read it. I accepted Christ as Lord and was delivered from my sin nature. You agree? Now, that doesn't mean you never sin anymore, but you were delivered from the nature of sin. That's a big difference, isn't it? And, and don't get confused about this. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you never sin you, you do still make mistakes, but now you're aware of that sin, and you can repent of it quickly, can't you? You can be pliable. I remember as a Catholic growing up, they said that we needed to say the act of contrition. Anybody else remember that? I never knew it, really what that word contrition meant, but then you study it out and you see it means to be contrite. It, it means to feel sorry about something to the point where you say, boy, if I could do that over again, I would not do it the same way as opposed to just feeling like, oh, man, I got caught, but I really didn't do anything wrong. No, contrition is what the Lord says in Psalms. It says he's close to those of a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Not the broken spirit part, like because you're grieving about something, but because you're, you're like, oh, I wounded the heart of God with my, my actions. And sin as a way of causing us to wound the heart of God. And then we come in and we say, you know what, Lord, I'm sorry. I love you too much. I don't want to behave that way anymore. But I need you to get down into my engine and clean the fuel that's running my engine so I don't keep whatever, cursing or gambling or drinking alcohol or spending the money, uh, the mortgage money on something, you know, some bad habit that I have. Because I know it's wrong, but in my own strength, I, I haven't been able to conquer this thing. Well, that's why the anointing comes in and breaks the yoke. <laughs> But it can't happen until he's Lord of your life, right? So I was under a death sentence of sin. I recognized it and repented. And then Jesus came in as Lord and delivered me from the nature to sin. Not the act of still sinning. I still do that, not intentionally. But my nature is no longer number one about me. Before you knew the Lord, you woke up every morning and number one, two, and three on the top ten was you. <laughs> That was the most important three things. Location, location, location. Me, me, me. Not as a Christian. 
Now Jesus is sitting on the throne. Now it's, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Number four is good, right? Let's say it. God anointed me with his Holy Spirit's power and his divine nature. Ooh, that's the new dispensation that we're in. You become a Christian, you get the Holy Spirit's presence in you. has to be there, the Bible says, because you can't say Jesus is Lord unless the Holy Spirit is the one to direct you to do it. Now, he shows himself in different ways, but we can always ask for more. That's okay. You're allowed. You can keep going up for seconds and thirds and fourths. Say, Lord, I want more of your power, more of your presence. You can say like John the Baptist, less of me and more of you, Lord. That includes more of your Holy Spirit. If there's things in my life that are stopping me from serving you at a greater level, show them to me because you said if it offends, cut it off. If there's a habit that I'm doing, like watching too much television or playing too many video games or there could be all kinds of things we could talk about, right? We know what those things are. But I haven't had the power. I haven't been able to control my appetite in that area. Lord, I'm asking you to help me. Come in and break this yoke off that I have to eat too much sugar too many carbs, whatever that thing is, whatever that comfort food is that you know is not just for nutrition. It's because I'm stressed out about something, and instead of going to the Lord, I've been going to the refrigerator. Let's break that thing. 